Summer Walker. Ah, oh, man, we talk about this lady basic every week, isn't it? She's always in the news. She's always finding a way to kind of get herself in the headline, which is a, which is a good thing, really, isn't it? In 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 the long and the short of it, um, for a new artist like herself to have such a stellar debut album, you know, to go through all the controversies she's gone through um, in public, and to also a command this amount of press is probably a good thing. Probably for her, it isn't personally. You know, she if she is suffering from social anxiety, having her name appear in you know, tons of mentions and Google threads and no Twitter thread, sorry. And to see yourself trending on Google trends all the time, it probably can get a bit annoying to see people pop up in your comments and talk wild. It could probably be quite frustrating, but I think for the fans, it's quite interesting to see how much attention she kind of garners. And um, none more so than this latest debacle that involved her concert in Toronto. So our Summer Walker was supposedly booked to do a show in Toronto she had been billing it up as a monumental occasion. She really looked forward to going to Toronto, meeting all her old friends and just kind of connecting with her fan base. You know, for once, she kind of seemed very much up for it. Because if you followed the whole Summer Walker controversy over the last couple of months, whatever it may be, especially for her live shows, you'd know that she's been, uh, she's had a very, uh, conflict, a very confusing relationship with her audience, right? She seems like, at one minute, she seems very grateful to finally be, you know, singing in front of hundreds and thousands or thousands of people in sold out arenas and the next time she feels very anxious and very afraid as to what that actually means because i think there is something to be said for even pe most people especially your average everyday person sometimes does it themselves i know i've done it to myself in the past and other jobs i've had you can sometimes self-sabotage because you know what because you're afraid of just what excellence might bring. You're afraid if you're if you actually stick to what you're doing now, you actually do a good job, you could potentially, you know, change your life forever. And you're not necessarily ready for that because you know it's gonna bring about you know, changing your your fortunes of your life and having more responsibilities will effectively change the what you do in your every day every your average day to day, right? You might require you to work later, you might have to kind of cut back on the holidays, cut back on the drinking, cut back on the going out. There are things that might have to change in your life. And I think sometimes we do, we inevitably self-sabotage ourselves because we don't want to achieve greatness because greatness comes with a lot of responsibility that not a lot of people want. Which is fine and dandy. But I think in some ways it's quite annoying because I think most people go into things naively wanting that kind of level of fame like imagine if you go into music or something you essentially might have your hero might be someone like a prince or michael jackson but then you're unaware as to what goes into being prince and michael jackson day in day out you're unaware of the sacrifices that come with that kind of role you're unaware of what you have to do the things you have to subject yourself to the place you have to subject yourself around the people you have to surround yourself with you have to put up with a lot more bs than you kind of are a probably aware of when you're first starting out and i think it's quite annoying to see it nowadays for me in real time with these new songstresses because for the most part most of these girls these songstress like you know ari nellitz like summer walker number one they have their they have their you know their internal struggle that they're going through they're striving for greatness but they're very much unaware as to what you know what that level of greatness requires from them but then on the other hand, they're also very forthright in expressing their opinions every single minute of the day on social media. And for me as a fan of music, for me as a fan of just artists in general, it gets a bit tiring to actually see these people, you know, with a selfie, sorry, uh, filming themselves again on the video on Instagram Live and ranting and raving to their fans about why life is so hard whilst they, you know, sit on their, you know, silk sheets after just selling out an, an arena tour somewhere. It's just hard to kind of swallow as a fan because by and large, you kind of want them to kind of be giving you updates on their music, collaborations, what they're thinking about the industry as a whole. But complaining about shows and expectations is just like tiring. But I kind of have some sympathy for Summer Walker in this occasion. But on the other side, again, I think she's kind of wilding as per usual. So it's an article from Billboard. It's the headline reads the following. Summer Walker responds to fan criticism over a delayed Toronto concert. So, fans are criticizing Summer Walker for repeatedly, reportedly delaying her Monday night concert for more than three hours. Concert goers took to social media uh, to voice their displeasure um, with the singer who recently cut back on North America tour due to struggles with social anxiety, right? She also canceled a bunch of dates because, you know, supposedly she's socially anxious. I've never in my own life met a socially anxious stripper, but, you know, former stripper, sorry, but that, that's, that's entirely possible nowadays. Which would be... <sighs> Are you allowed to say? Are you allowed to say you don't believe that? Are you allowed to say you're a bit skeptical about it? I think all these self-diagnoses 
are a bit annoying, right? Everyone suffering from mental health issues is annoying too because everyone's self-diagnosing. No one's actually going to a professional and actually, you know, getting a, an actual diagnosis from a, a, a medical professional. For some reason, people want to use medical terms, but they don't really prescribe them or prescribe themselves to medical um, examination. It is what it is. But I think that's a bit weird. Is this, it, would it be similar to saying, would you believe someone if they told you I'm a socially anxious porn star? Is that entirely possible? Maybe there is because in, in the pool's probably a bad example because there are there has been there has been occasions of there has been quite a few instances of porn stars, especially women who've kind of you know had drug overdoses and suffered things because of you know bullying online and stuff. So that could be possible, but I just don't know, man. I don't know if I buy that. It's just a bit weird to kind of be socially anxious, but then always be around people when you're on social media. It's just weird. She's always on Instagram lives twerking and shit, doing things that not on, and so. so when I think of socially anxious, I think of someone like Party Next Door. He hardly posts online. He doesn't really communicate with his fans, if ever. Bryson Tiller's another one. Um, they, I would imagine they'd be quite awkward when you make them, meet them in real life. Um, they wouldn't be the most largest, larger than life person ever, maybe unless they re hit the stage. But I don't know, man. Maybe it's, again, maybe it's not my place to say, but I don't know. I, I have my reservations. So, some fans angered, uh, some angered fans cite braving the frigid Toronto temperatures while seeing Walker post photos hanging out with Drake and London on the track early in the night. Drizzy hopped on a remix with the R&B artist Breakout hit single "Girls Need Love" back in February. Now that's the one bit that I had in a, I had a bit of an annoyance with. I think for the most part, I think if you're a fan of Summer Walker and you're ready to stay outside in a freezing Toronto cold for three hours, you deserve all the props in the world, right? But if you're a fan, you're gonna stay. If I bought a ticket to see Summer Walker, I'll probably stay too, right? There's no there's no point in leaving now. If I wait for one hour, I might as well wait two. If I wait two, I might as well wait three. Um, if you just don't want to wait, you go home and you just go home, innit? And just continue doing your thing. Give a ticket to somebody else. Let them go inside. No problem with that whatsoever. But I think the thing that's annoying, the thing that kind of rubbed me up the wrong way if I was a fan, is if I was standing in line waiting for her to perform and I'm seeing all these pictures on, on, on her Instagram of her hanging out with all her favorite artists and friends. Like, that is a bit rubbing your fans' nose in it for the most part. And I think that's the way the disconnect comes, I think, from some of these artists nowadays especially some of the younger ones they don't seem to they seem to take their fans for granted they don't seem to really take they seem to take the piss with their fans they don't seem to really care um how their fans feel about certain things they seem to just to be like you know what this is what i'm doing i'm doing it i don't care there's no real kind of um i don't know how to describe it man there's no real hmm how do you say it not empathy but well maybe it's empathy right with the, with their fan position they're not sent like would your favorite pop star do that? Probably not, right? They probably, you know, let's think of somebody corny like a Ariana Grande or like a Taylor Swift or something. What would they be doing if they had to make their fans wait for three hours? They'd be on Instagram live. They'd be posting videos of them running around the backstage, trying to fix, trying to pretend like they're fixing the sound, mucking around the cables. There'd be pictures of them on, on, you know, on the phone, seemingly talking to somebody that we don't mean imaginary or maybe a tour manager or something trying to sort the situation out. They'd be doing something to, to kind of alleviate alleviate their fans. And to, also, they'd be worried that their fans would just leave, right? Because I think even if you're sold out an arena tour, you still want your fans to be there because I'm pretty sure you get the money anyway, right? If, if you're sold out, if no one turns up in a day. Imagine if there's a hurricane, no one turned up. You still get paid, right? I'm assuming because the show essentially did sell out. But you still wouldn't want to perform in front of, you know, 10 people. You want a lot of people to be there. So I think that's probably where I'm a bit miffed by it. It's like, there was no worry in her campsite that the fans were just going to leave and she wasn't going to perform in front of anyone. They just assumed everyone would just hang around for her to wait, which they did anyway. But that kind of level of arrogance is a bit... <sighs> anyway, let's continue. Um, one attendee re relay that Walker finally hit the stage shortly after 11 p.m. Jesus Christ, and performed under and performed just under an hour, which made for quite the underwhelming experience. Walker, Sam Walker is corny. Mental health and social anxiety is one thing, but having your fans wait in the cold while you stroll around Toronto posting is wild, unprofessional. The over it singer told Toronto fans to be prepared for a chill vibe, but didn't warn them about the sort of delay of the recent concert in a since deleted post social media. If y'all want to see me do two splits and a backflip and then a Dale belt and one pussy pop, this show is not for you. Just this, this for wine sippers, blunt rollers and hand swears, she wrote. Which again is a bit annoying, you know, this idea that, you know, I don't describe with these, these new artists, it's just frustrating. This is my annoyance I had with the fans booing Drake. Drake is your show. 
Frank hardly appears and just walks side to side and you guys are siding with the Frank thing. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the idea that the more punish, the more punishment you have to endure under an artist, the more you love them. The more they don't love you, the more that you're chasing after them probably. That respect that and because Drake is so fan um fan centric, he's so willing to kind of do anything for the fans. He kind of loves his supporters, he's always listening to them, always trying to give them what they want and challenge them on what they want. There's that kind of to and fro communication. Maybe the people just take it for granted. The fact that you can communicate with him. He sometimes replies back to you in the comments and stuff, right? He gets to people's DMs and gives them words of encouragement. He's like a cool dude, personable guy, even for the level of popularity that he is. But I think maybe because some of these guys are so inaccessible, right? Summer Walker, Frank Ocean, they're just like, you know, they just they just put out, they just talk. It's like talking to a one-way mirror. They don't have, there's no communication back. They're just talking at you. Maybe with fans, they're like, you know what? I want to be their friend so badly because I want to be that one person that can maybe, you know, um, crack through the veneer and kind of really get to know them personally. But that's never going to happen. They're never going to be your friends, you know? It's just this level of, like, disrespect to fans is just wild. And again, the three-hour wait is not that big of a deal in, in, in context, really. If you're able to explain it, well, I think the reason, the rationale I've heard now is that supposedly her equipment got held up at customs, which is, you know insane because it means that she arrived on the day of the concert didn't arrive the day before arrived like a few hours before the concert started and then that's when the, you know it's just that's just another story another day it's like you didn't prepare beforehand you didn't bring the i don't know i don't know we can, let's continue um so she read on instagram she went on instagram live to say y'all don't even know what goes on behind the scenes i had to fire my sound team twice i don't know why that why that concerns us i don't know um i couldn't find my passport again why that's concerns we don't know a birth certificate and i had to be up at 5 a.m to do two different offices to get to my new passport and birth certificate. babe you're a pop star this is what happens you're a pop star you're like a an r&b icon a legend closely approaching this is what you have to do this is part of actually being at the top of your um um, at the top of your respective music genre. This is what it requires. It requires you sometimes having to like fly, you know, throughout the night, not have any sleep, grab a cup of coffee, do some press, go on the stage show, perform, jump off the stage show, do some more press, fly back to your home state, recall something. This is what it happens when you're at the top of the, the apex of the mountain. What do you expect? Somehow she expects to be, have the fans of Mary Carey, but do the work of somebody that's performing to a SoundCloud audience where you can just rock up to a club, play your songs on an MP3 and then bounce. No, you're going to have to do more than that. You can't have R&B level of fandom, R&B level of hysteria. I mean, Mariah Carey level of hysteria and fandom, but then approach it like you're approaching some, you know, show at, uh, I don't know, at like some, you know, 500 capacity um, arena somewhere. I mean, a club, whatever it may be. You have to come with it in a different professional manner. And this is just wild. Like Again, as her as an artist, I'm all for it. Do your thing. I think now is the best era to be an artist. Now you can get away with this, right? Fans, for the most part, don't care if you're drugged up on stage, um, leaned out, you know, super high, you can't even sing, drunk. Um, the more crazy and, you know, wild you are, the more the fans tend to like you, you know? I saw a video recently, I post Malone walking, you know, off the stage and randomly, you know, t having a, taking a beer from some random stranger in the crowd, which is wild, but people do that sometimes, right? But the more rack wild you are in that way, the more people tend to like you. That's fine. But the, for the fans, how can you be a, how is it, how can you rationalize being a Sam Walker fan when she, you know, treats you with such disdain and doesn't want to inform you and tells you the day of, oh, I lost my passport, oh, my birth certificate, oh, I had to get up at 5 a.m., oh, this, oh, that. Like, how is that even, it's just insane, man. Anyway, um, to an office, by the time I got to Toronto, all I had time to do was to check in. Oh, Sorry about that. Um, wash my hair and get to the venue. I didn't even know I was motherfucking late. I got on stage and when I told and when I when I'm told to go on stage, Drake told me he was going to come to my show. I told him not to come because I suck. He comes, very grateful, nice man. He was extremely sweet. The thing is, we only spoke for two minutes. Him, Meek, and some other niggas walked in. We say hello. I take a picture. We probably exchange about two sentences, and then he said, "Summer, it's time to go on stage." I didn't. I did what I was supposed to do. If I'd known my fuckers were waiting four hours, I would have apologized. So why don't you apologize now then? I don't get this. I don't get this. If she would like again, this 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 woman is insane, bro. She's uh, how she has fans. I just don't know. And these are some excellent memes. Obviously, some posts of her uh, backstage with the boys. Some walker is really on a field trip with her fans in Toronto after game hyperthermia. You hate to see it. <laughs> Summer Walker had her fans wait three hours in the call while she went and toured Toronto with Drake. 
Man, there's some awkward girls and other. She's, she's another level. Again, I don't know what it is about these new artists. Again, you know what's going to be fu- funny to see? How does she react when she starts to lose fans and no one starts to care about her album? It's not going to happen probably because I think she's. I think this is an example that we see in sports, even with someone like a Neymar. If you're that le- if you're that talented, people will just have people will just put up with whatever they have to put up with because you can change games. It, Neymar did it the other day against Real Madrid. He came on, he essentially played DM or CM and completely changed the game, inspired PSG to a 2-2 draw, nearly got them a 2-2, what, 3-2 win if uh, Mbappe would have pulled the ball back. You know, top top players do top level stuff, but they have to, they come in a lot of baggage. And I think songstresses, rappers, uh, singers in general, these are their same thing, right? I think even sometimes, you know, diva-like, enigmatic um, lead singers in bands are the same way. If you're that level of talent, you're just going to come with a kooky personality, you're going to take the piss, you're going to take liberties, and people will have to put up with it because you just always deliver on albums. And if she does deliver albums and singles, which are people, what, what, the main reason why people rate her, it's going to be fine. But I think if I was a fan of Summer Walker, I would be super annoyed if I came out of that concert. After, especially, I think most fans that went there probably had a good time. But I think after, I, if I left and I would have seen her Instagram post and what she wrote on social and her, her Instagram video, I would have been like, what the fuck? I would have apologized if I knew I was late. That's a mad wild statement to make to your fans, man. Imagine that. Like, I don't know. Again, I have no words, man. No words. Um, but yeah, big up Summer Walker for being a legend. She's basically uh, Lauren Hill 2.0. Um, arrives super late. People still wait. She sings her song. People complain. She just keeps it going. Rinse and repeat, innit? She's never going to change. Um, but yeah, wow. To be a Summer Walker fan, innit? To be a Summer Walker fan. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. What else do we have here? Uh, 